Okay, so for the purposes of this illustration, we're going to draw out seven points on the screen. We, you could call them vertices in geometry. A vertice is a point where two or more curves, line or edges meet. So if you think of a university campus, quite a large area, these could represent seven different buildings. Let's give them labels. So we'll start here and we'll give this an A. And I'm not going to do this alphabetically. I'll just randomly choose letters and we'll fill that in in that way. So like any trip that you would do in a vehicle, you want to have a starting point and you want to have an end point. And you want to know what is the shortest point? How do you do this mathematically? So in this case, we're going to go from A and we want to end up at Z. Z or Z is our destination. If this was a network, we would be connected. So the buildings would be connected. So let's connect them all using these straight lines like this. So now I have a network that's completely connected and they could be fiber connections. It could be whatever, depending on the distance between these points or these buildings. Now, like we said, we want to go from A to Z. What's the shortest path? Well, to know that, we would need to have some costs between these different buildings. Now, I'm going to use arbitrary numbers over here. They don't represent anything for the purposes of this illustration. So a network engineer would say, OK, either those I'm going to put in cost and they could represent actual distance. They might represent that 100 meters or 200 meters from building A is building B or, or building B lab. But they could also be other things. They could be the amount of bandwidth. So, for example, you might say, well, between building J and building E, I have massive amount of bandwidth. I have an 80 gigabit connection. So that means I have tons of bandwidth. I'm going to give it a really low cost. I'm going to give it a cost of one. But between E and P, well, I don't have a very fast network connection. And maybe between A and J, it's, it's even slower than that. So I'll give it a cost of 14. The important thing to realize is this is just arbitrary numbers. Now, while I've been talking, you've been looking at that screen and you've already started working out in your head what is the shortest path from A to Z. And you might think, ah, it must be this one here because A to J is 14 and 2 and 3. Well, if I do that calculation, that comes out at 19. So maybe that's the shortest route. And then you started calculating other routes and you said, okay, well, maybe it could be this one because that is three plus five plus nine. And that is how much? It's 17. Oh, so this one is cheaper than that one. So yeah, this one is the route. But is that the cheapest? If I just leave it like this on screen for another minute or two, you might definitely find other routes some more expensive, some cheaper to get you from A to Z. But what if you had hundreds of thousands of points? You couldn't do that in your head. That's why we need Dijkstra. That's why we need these algorithms so that we can calculate this. And network engineers are interested in this because this is what Fabric Connect is going to use to calculate the shortest path between nodes on our Fabric Connect network. To complete all of this, we're going to have to put in a table just to track all of these things because we now need to take Dijkstra's algorithm to put it into this diagram, run it as a constant repeat until we've gone to every point and calculated what's the cheapest to the next point from where I am. Let's start with the first, the first step. We're at A. How much does it cost to get to A? Well, it doesn't cost anything. We are already on A. So in the table, the shortest distance from A Let's fill that in as a zero. Then the algorithm says visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest known cost from the start vertex. You'll see that there's no costs on all these other vertices. But mathematically, what we really should do is put infinity symbols over here because we don't know cost. Yes, visually you can look and see, but mathematically to symbolize that we don't know the costs, we put an infinity symbol. So we've been to A. Let's just cross out A. We can't use that again in a calculation because we've We've now done that. Let's look at the unvisited vertices with the smallest known cost from the start. So what are the vertices connected to A? Well, they are J, they are E, 
and they are K. Those are the three that are connected to A. Why not P? Well, if you look at the map, you can see over here that P has no direct connection to A. It goes through another vertex. It goes through J. So only J, E, and K. Okay, now that we've identified them, the next step in the algorithm says, for the current vertex, calculate the cost of each neighbor from the start vertex. This is important, from the start. So we know that A has a cost of zero. Okay, so how do we calculate what J is? It is zero plus 14, which is equal to 14. What about E? Well, that's quite easy. It's zero plus six, which is equal to six, of course. And then it is K at a cost of three. Perfect. The next step in the algorithm says, if the calculated cost, the cost that you've just worked out of these vertices is less than the known cost, the cost that you already know that's in that table, update it with the cheaper cost. Okay, so let's start with the top one, J. J is 14. Let's see what J currently is on there. Oh, hang on. It's infinity, infinitely high. So let's remove that. And let's put in there 14. It is 14. Why? Because 14 is less than infinity. Perfect. What about E? Well, E has a cost of 6. What was it previously? E was a cost of infinity. All right. So now it is a, has a cost of 6. Perfect. And the next one is K. K. K has also a cost of infinity. And we're going to ch change that to a cost of Three. The next step now says update the prev previous vertex column for each of the updated costs. So the previous vertex, J, to get to J, where did we come from? Well, we actually came from A. So there we update the vertex in K. Where did, how did we get to K? Well, we came from A. And how did we get to E? Well, it came from A. Perfect. We've now got that done. Right. Now we can take out A because we're not going to be visiting this anymore. Okay. Now we look at our algorithm again. Visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest known cost from the start vertex. So what is that? Well, let's go look at our table. What's the smallest one? Well, it's this one here. K at a cost of three. So now we go to K. And now algorithm says the second one for the current vertex examine its unvisited neighbors. So who are the unvisited neighbors? Certainly not A because we've scratched it out. That's been visited. So the unvisited neighbors in this case are E and L. Those are the unvisited neighbors. So what's the cost to get to the E vertex from K? We know already that the initial cost from here from the table is 3. So we say 3 plus 10 and we know that to be 13. And the next one says, well, to get to L, it's 3 plus 5. 5 from there, of course. And that equals to 8. So now we have a cost for E and a cost for L. So let's go to our table. The cost for E now is 10. Is 10 less than 6? No, it isn't. So don't change it. What about L? L is a cost of 8. Previously, it was infinity. So yes, there we go we have a cost of eight. Now, where did we come from? If you're now at L, where did you come from? Well, you came, the previous vertex was K. So there we go. In that column, we put K. Now, there are no more unvisited neighbors. And over here, we can take out K. Now, this step gets repeated over and over and over. There's not too much more to go, but we just go over this quickly. Same steps over and over. Right. The next step in the algorithm, the first step was visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest known cost from the start. For the current vertex, visit its unvisited neighbors. So A and K are out. So it's got to be J, P, Z, and L. So let's look at J. What's the cost to J? Well, if we go from E, which table shows as having a cost of 6, 6 plus 1 puts J at a cost of 7. For the P vertex, 6 plus 12 gives us a cost of 18. For the Z or Z vertex, it's 6 plus 8, which gives us 14. And for the L vertex, it's 6 plus 2 which gives us a cost of 8. Okay, now we need to update the table. Let's start with J. 
Previously it was 14. We look at the updated cost, it's now seven. So we add seven into the column. P on the other hand had an extremely high cost of infinity previously. Now it has a cost of 18. Now let's look at L. It was previously eight, it's not less. So we leave it exactly as is. Finally, we look at Z, which previously had a cost of infinity and now has been replaced with a cost of 14. Let's update the table. So here we go, all the values have now been updated. All the cheaper values have now been updated in the table. Now for all of these ones that we've just completed, the previous vertex for all of these was E. So we just update them in the table in the last column. Right, so there's nothing else that's unvisited from E. So we can rule out E over here. We don't come back to this anymore. Now that we've completed that process, we restart the algorithm again. Visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest known cost from the start vertex. So what is it? Let's look at the table. Uh, the next smallest one has got to be J. J at a cost of seven. Visit its unvisited neighbors. Which are the unvisited neighbors of J? Well, it's P, right? It's P. So what's the cost? Well, J was a cost of seven. To get to P, it is seven plus this cost over here, two equals to nine. That's the cost for P. Okay, so let's look at the table now. And we go to P and we put in a cost of nine. And what was the previous vertex that we came from? Well, P came from J. So we update that to J. Perfect. There's no more unvisited neighbors, so we can scratch out J. So this is kind of a process of elimination that we're going through. Trigger the algorithm again. Visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest cost, which is that. It's L. L is the one with the smallest cost now because it has a cost of eight. All right, so let's go to eight. Which are eight's neighbors? Well, actually the unvisited neighbors are only Z, right? Z. And what is the cost? Well, take L, which is eight, and we say eight plus nine, and we know that that is 17. So we have a new cost of 17 to Z. What was the previous cost? 14. Ah, that's a cheaper cost than 17. We don't need to update anything, right? We don't need to update, so we can rule out L. Let's look at the Algorithm again, visit the unvisited vertex with the smallest known cost from the start. Well, look at the table. What's the next cheapest one? Lowest cost. Well, it's P, this one over here at a cost of nine. So let's go to P. What are the unvisited neighbors? Actually, there's only one, which is Z. So what's the cost? Well, P is nine. So we say nine plus three. That's the cost to get to Z from P. 9, 10, 11, 12. We have a cost of 12. Let's map that into here and we say, ah, Z was 14 previously. Now it is 12. So let's go and mark it as 12. Yes, 12. There we go. And where was the previous vertex? How did I get there? Well, I got there from P. So let's write P in there. Okay. So now that we've done that, we can take out P. P is now done. So we've now finished the algorithm. What was the shortest path to get to Z? To get to Z, we came through P. So if we write Z down the bottom, we came through P. How did we get to P? Well, let's look at P over here. We got to P through J. So we say we got there through J. How did we get to J? We got through E. Perfect. And how did we get to E? Well, we actually got to E through A. So this is the path that was used. A, E, J, P, Z. Let's look at that. What is the total cost of that? So from A to E, that was a cost of six plus. From E to J, that was a cost of one plus. From J to P, that was a cost of two. And from P to Z, that was a cost of three. So what was the cost in total? 12. And so when we talk about Fabric Connect and we say that Fabric and using ISIS, IS uses Dijkstra to work out the closest path, the shortest path, the cheapest path to get to its destination. This is the mathematics. This is what it is using to be able to get you there.
Isn't that fantastic? I hope you enjoy that. Thank you.